Hi, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in and thank you for your patience. We've had some uh, technical issues this, uh, earlier today and we also had a confusion with the announcement of the time. But for those of you who are here and joining us live, thank you so much for your patience. We've made it. Sometimes it's hard to coordinate when there's three of us. Say hi, guys. Woohoo! Hey, everyone. So I brought my, my friends along today uh, and many of you know them already, Emmanuel and Sunny. I'm sure all of you know them, but in case you don't, they are amazing, awesome people. You should know them if you don't know them. Please look them up if you don't. They are brilliant healers, teachers, authors. And today we wanted to talk to you about whatever you might be feeling, the fears you might be feeling or whatever you might be feeling and how to kind of get through it. And um, my dear friends, both of them are great with um, uplifting people and great with tools. And I thought we should all come in, uh, we should all do this together and uplift you all together. But Emmanuel has something to say. And so Emmanuel, I'll let you go first. Well, first and foremost, I just wanted to thank you, Anita, for just having us in your sacred home, online home. Uh, it's such an honor. And thank you for being such a pillar of light. I, When I think of you, I think of light and love. And I just think of so much uh, wisdom that I've, you know, just hanging out with you uh, in, in person and also just having chats on the, on the phone or here. Um, I just always leave feeling so much more expanded so thank you for that and sunny when i think of you i think of just this extraordinary courageous strong light as well like this goddess warrior energy um, and it's so inspiring because we need that right now so many people are uh, a little bit off their balance and having someone who's so strong in their conviction like you um sunny i hope you feel this from my heart because that's just how i feel um, and everyone watching right now, I want to thank you as well for just being here, spending time with us, uh, even if it's, this is your first time, if this is something that you do often when, when we have uh, videos, we want to welcome you and we want to thank you for just being you and knowing that we are all in this together. That's what the title of this um, show is today. It's all about us being together. And we also wanted to share a little bit about what we're going through during this time. So you know that we are all in this together. So with that being said, uh, before we open it up, I want to just express my deepest gratitude to all of the uh, people working at supermarkets and the healthcare system. I also want to uh, send so much love to everyone making a difference, people who are actually um, you know, spreading positivity and light. So many people are coming together. We're seeing it in, in Italy. We're seeing it in the States. We're seeing it all over the world where people are, you know, being kinder and more loving. They're singing more. So it's really a, a time to kind of ca come back into a state of presence and really break down so that the breakthrough can happen. So I know sometimes the breakdown can feel really scary, um, but something beautiful always comes on the other side of it. So with that being said, Sunny, I would like to just ask you how you're doing and what's going on in your world right now with all this craziness. You know, I, uh, I'm doing really well today. I think that's how most people feel is it's it's hour by hour, right? It's hour by hour, it's day by day. And sometimes you might read a little too much news and then you might kind of have a drop and then you come back to your center and, and get focused and go outside and get into nature and then your vibe raises. And I, I think that's what's happening for most people. And one of the things that I'm discovering in my own community is that many people are struggling to, um, to stay centered for themselves. and. The ups and downs right now, you just kind of got to plan on them. Mm -hmm. you know? um, that's, this is wh where we are right now. And I think that, you know, I, I'm not someone that likes to step into the fear, but I, I want to let the fear move through me so it doesn't get stuck in me. So when I have those fearful moments, like we all do, uh, I, I allow myself to acknowledge it and feel it. And then as soon as I can, flip it and release it. Um, and for me, that's by going outdoors, that's by grounding myself, it's by centering, it's by meditation. And 
most importantly for me, it's to be of service, you know? So what I've done in, in my own community is I've created a community where people can be of service because I think a lot of times part of the challenge, and we were talking about this earlier before we came on, is people feel out of control and they don't, they don't feel like they can do something. I'm sure many of you are feeling that way, like I just need to do something. And so often if we can show up to support someone else, then that calms that sense of fear for us too, because ultimately we are in this together. And, and when we all know that we are one, whatever we do affects the other. So if we can keep that vibration high, if we can be of service, then we send out a vibration of, of, of love and of uh, connection and of, of service to each other. And right now, that's what we can do. And, and I know for the three of us, that's what we're doing. And we're seeing so much of that in the world. And my, my vision is that as difficult as this is and as challenging as it's been, um, at the beginning of the year, I had a sense that, that systems were going to fall. Had no idea it was going to look like this. Um, but I'm seeing those break down in order for new, new, amazing things to be built. And I think we've got to hold that vision because, you know, there's never a time. We've all gone through shitty things. And when we're in it, we never go, all right, this is feeling really good right now. But we come through it. And when we get to the other side, we say, that was the best thing that could have happened. And it's not to minimize the pain and the sickness and the struggle, but it is to recognize that sometimes these hard things are what give us the strength and give us the ability to see beyond just the fear and into the light. And ultimately, we are all love and light. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said, beautifully Beautiful. said. And I agree with you about the service because, um, and it's performing services. And also when you read about the acts of kindness, it makes you feel really uplifted. I know that when I read about things other people are doing, um, it just really makes you feel uplifted and it just uplifts your mood. And then it inspires other people to do the same. And I think this is a great time to actually be of service and then it does make you feel uplifted and it makes you feel somewhat in control of the situation because in truth um nobody is exempt and there's like no group of people that isn't feeling it right now at some level and like say for example for me one of my fears is that um my, my mom is 92 years old so she's in that very vulnerable age group and she's very far away from me and I am unable to travel to see her or be with her. It's not um, like there are no flights going out there now. And at the same time, it's not recommended for anyone to get on a plane and it's not recommended to go and be with elderly people. I mean, for all I know, I could be carrying it and not know it. So, um, and so, so my, my thoughts, like I just pray that she stays safe and she stays, stays okay because my biggest fear is if something happens to her, I can't be there. And so um, in some way or other, we're all affected by it. And of course, we're all affected by needing to keep social distance and stay at home and, mm -hmm. and, um, and things like that. So, so, so yeah. Anita, mm -hmm. Anita, how are you getting through it? Because that's really tough to be in that position what are some things that you are using tools things that might really help those watching right now what are some things that are helping you get through that separation right now between you and your mom so i am um uh, contacting her a lot more on video well on either skype or whatsapp and like video calling she's not great with technology but she has a caregiver who i contact the caregiver and then that caregiver puts the screen in front of my mom and so i am staying in touch with her that way and trying to explain to her why i can't be there and i'm calling her like so much more than normal and she's liking that she's enjoying that mm -hmm. and so when i see her smiling and feeling better um, then that makes me feel better she does have other family members immediate family members my brother is there who can still be there for her and and his family so so that is also making me feel better i'm finding that what i'm doing during this time is that i'm counting my blessings i'm feeling gratitude for the things that are in place and the things that i have that's what's making me feel better. And this is the time when I'm feeling how that really helps. I am 
self-reflecting, meditating a lot more, going out in nature, walking, exercising a lot more. I'm cooking a lot more, eating a lot healthier. And here's the interesting thing, as this is happening in the world, and don't get me wrong, I am really feeling for everyone and being an empath as both of you are as well, and so many of the audience, I know that you're all feeling the energy of it. But what I have been feeling is because I have been taking care of myself through this physically, I'm actually feeling pretty good. But that's not to say, I mean, there's no guarantee who's going to get it or not. But, but, um, but my point is, I've noticed that I am practicing a lot more self-care, a lot more. Um, so that's one of the things I've been doing. I've been walking and eating healthily and uh, cooking my own food, which I love doing. And I find that if you can spend time doing the things that you do have control over, which is... Um, you know, taking care of your well-being and even doing things for other people and feeling gratitude for the things that are good in your life, that helps a lot. That really helps. For sure. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And um, yeah, just to kind of tail end on that, same thing personally, just making sure that I'm, I'm doing well so that I can be of service to others. I volunteered in the local community to help the elderly get them their groceries and we have to get thermometers and all that. Like dealing with it is not even a big deal. It's actually putting, throwing yourself into service. And this is the time I feel like I have been waiting for, not specifically in the sense of what's happening, but really stepping out of my comfort zone, out of my shell, and being vulnerable, being open and available in ways that I may not have been prior. For example, um, I just love making people happy. I love making people smile. And so, you know, one of the things that I do is sing. And I haven't really shown that side of me to my uh, community and friends um, for a long time. So I started doing that. I'm calling it Manioki. Uh, every, every week we're going to have a new episode. And then, um, you know, just um, always giving, uh, being of service, thinking about um, meditations and processes that I can create to help people through this time. I've just really thrown myself into service that I can't really even think about being in fear right now because I just want to serve. And that's really helped me a lot. Although I know that it's important to really check in with myself and see how I feel, which I'm learning how to do more and more, but I could always use doing more of that. <laughs> I think that's our nature though, you know, especially as, as um, teachers and speakers and authors are, our, our tendency is service. Yes. And, um, and, and, and right now, um, the, the way that we usually serve by speaking at events and by doing classes and workshops has been halted as it has for everybody in the world, right? And so um, I think that for us, it's, yes, we know we need that self-care. And I think, I think we're all gonna be buff by the end of this. Like everybody's working out and walking and taking care of themselves and eating better. But you know, for me, that's the same thing. I created a, a Facebook group called Hearts Helping Humanity and and poured myself into that. And my team really has poured themselves into it to, to have a place for people, just like you were saying, Emmanuel, to go that need help. Like this is literally like they don't have food. You know, it's not yes. like they want to have a coffee pot or they want, they don't have food. They don't have diapers for their babies. They don't have formula. And so this community has been such a bright light because as you see somebody say, hey, I live in St. Paul, Minnesota, and I don't have this. And then you have somebody come on that says, I live in Rochester, Minnesota. I can get you that. And they drop it off. I mean, it's just so this, awesome. this, seeing the best part of humanity. Mm -hmm. That's, that's amazing. That's, that's and thank, you, thank you, Sunny, for creating that. Thank yeah. you. It was, it was totally inspired by an owl. My, I saw an owl and it talked to me. I know that might sound crazy to some of you, but I think we're all in the same community. So yeah. that's not too, too crazy. And it said, you know, um, you, you got to do something to help move the energy so people can feel useful. Mm -hmm. That's and, a brilliant idea. Yeah. So I would love for you guys, anybody that feels guided to come and help people, or if you need help, 
Hearts Helping Humanity. It's, it's a Facebook group and you can come and join us. And I think that when we channel our energy, whether it's into ourselves, whether it's into somebody else from a place of recognition of um, our light and our love, then it just expands. And when, mm -hmm. and when we don't do that, it dies. Yeah. 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 That is amazing. And that's, that's really a great idea what you're doing, because it is so important. I participate in a, um, a on an app, I'm sure many of you know, next door app, which mm -hmm. is for our neighborhood. And, and they, there are many groups that have been started. And so I participate in those. I haven't actually created something online as you have, which is such a brilliant idea. Um, but what we do is what I do is like, um, give a shout out to my neighbors when I'm doing a grocery run or something like yeah. that. And so what I'd love to do here is for all of you listening in, in the comments, give, um, share some of your ideas of what you do during this time to help other people, ideas of service that we can do for other people. And maybe we can all share ideas and get through this together because, um, Self-care and service are the, really the two important pillar stones. One is self-care is recharging your own batteries and service is using that energy to help others and help the planet. So yes. those Absolutely. are the, really the two pillars. And those neighborhood apps are great because mm -hmm. then you can, you, know, you can help right there and you can drop it off and you don't have to have the interaction. So you're still honoring the social distancing and, and people are so appreciative like, I, like you. Um, Anita, my mom lives with me, but she's got leukemia. And so she has a weakened immune system. And so it's something that, you know, we, we have to, even though we might be healthy, we have to function as if, and take responsibility as if we can affect each and every person. And what I love about that is we do affect each and every person. If our energy is high, we affect people. If our energy is low, we affect people. So it's really just a, 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 a physical way of understanding the energetics, right? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It is. And I want to say here also, um, I know that so many people who tune in are empaths. And so, and, uh, so just, to, um, just to tell off what you just said, um, Sunny, about, about the energy, empaths really feel the energy and they're really feeling the energy of everything that's happening right now on the planet, even if they're not sick and they're not feeling the physical symptoms they're mm -hmm. feeling it energetically they're feeling that 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 fear or the lowness or the, they're feeling something so i wanted to just talk a little bit about what empaths can do to lift their energy and i know that one of the things that empaths can do is interestingly service as you mentioned it takes the focus off of ourselves and the energy we're feeling and the fear we're feeling and mm -hmm. it helps us to kind of focus on other people so it's basically shifting that focus i feel empaths particularly need to um, become aware of shifting their focus empaths have this gift of having very powerful energies when they are centered, when they're feeling really centered, their energies are super powerful. But when they're feeling in fear, they become their own worst enemies. Is there anything, um, you guys, Emmanuel, that you would like to say to that? Yes. So thank you so much. You, we are, we totally have ESP because that's exactly what I was going to, I'm sure all of us were going to talk about. So um, what I wanted to say is that fear vibrates at a specific frequency. And the thing is, a lot of people, find that frequency very uncomfortable it's very physically uncomfortable it it's emotionally uncomfortable it brings up a lot of anger we're seeing a lot of people who are angry right now a little frustrated um you know feeling helpless all those things so what i have found for me that has been very helpful and, and i share this with with my community often is rather than run away from the fear i actually honor it as if it's one of my children. And so I see fear as this frequency that just needs a little extra love and attention from me. And how can I pause enough? Because if I'm not taking moments for myself and being still and, and kind of being present, I can get really caught up in the fear if I'm sure you guys can uh, relate to that. Um, so 
really getting into a state of being that loving presence, that compassionate presence that I would want a best friend to be to me or a loving mom or a dad to be to me, I do that for the energy of fear. And the way I do that is, first and foremost, I ask myself how I'm doing. I'll check in. I'll be like, hey, Manny. Hey, Emmanuel. How are you doing? Um, and then I'll kind of see what comes up. And then if, if um, something comes up, oh, I'm struggling, something's going on, I'll say, how do I feel about that? What do I feel about that? And where am I holding that feeling in my body? Usually it's in my stomach. That's where I usually hold stuff. Some people hold it in their jaw. Some people hold it in their um, chest, their shoulders. So for me, I'll just place my hands over my stomach and I'll just let myself feel that discomfort. Just feel it. Just be with it. Don't have to try to change it. Don't try to have to run away from it, fix it. Just feel it, being in that state of grace and just allowing myself to be in that space for like as long as it needs until it feels like it's being acknowledged, until it feels like, hey, wait a minute, I'm feeling lighter. I'm feeling like you paid attention to me because fear is a real energy. It's a frequency that just is trying to get our attention. So I'll be with it, I'll sit with it, and I'll feel into it. And then all of a sudden, something seemingly magical happens and it releases. A, a lightness occurs, a peace occurs. And so that peace, once it happens, I express deep gratitude to the fear, to the parts of me that want, wanted to identify with the fear. I send it so much gratitude because it was just trying to get my attention, telling me something was a little bit off. And then I come back to my piece, and then I start sending love to the people, places, experiences in my reality. Um, and that's what I've been doing with meditation for the, for the world, uh, as you've been doing, Anita and Sunny, and just sending out that light from a space of peace, not from a space of urgency and scared and nervous because that's not really going to support anyone that's going to continue adding on to more of that uh, fear-based paradigm but the key for us we are the micro of the macro so the micro meaning we are the universe we are the world we are you know your body your cells are the earth so when we are able to view ourselves in that way we take our power back get ourselves back into alignment come into a state of grace when we're ready it's not like we're trying to rush ourselves and when we feel peace then we can be of service and go out into the world and be that loving light presence which anita and sunny both of you so beautifully exemplify so that's sort of uh hopefully that wasn't too long <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, I, I, love, I remember you teaching that when we did an event together last year, and I think that's such a great way to to look at it as our little children, because we know that we have to be patient with our children and compassionate with our children, and I think that's one of the challenges that people have struggled with is that compassion. So I, I've been on here, and I'm looking at some of the things people do. So people are checking in with their neighbors. They loved what, what you shared, Anita. Um, joining different kinds of groups that um, that can help them kind of just share their share their feelings. Um, planted a vegetable garden so they could kind of create some create some new energy. Um, one gal said that she's um, shopping for all of the neighbors. Um, so awesome. So I mean, so so coming together. There's a group on Facebook. Oh, this one is beautiful. There is a group on Facebook that's asking to just hang hearts in your window. So Aww. when people go for a walk, they see the hearts in the window and they can just count how many people. That's It's it's growing tremendously. I think it's oh called gosh. hearts. hearts um, if you do hashtag hearts something, I, I can't remember what it is. But so there's that. And then the other one, I, I, love that. I did this one yesterday. I just wrote in sidewalk chalk in front of my house. Um, my statement has been be a lighthouse because I think there's so many people that are struggling in the dark that – we want to be a lighthouse. And so I wrote, be a lighthouse on one sidewalk. And then on the other one, I wrote, be kind. Because, <laughs> you know, we need that reminder sometimes. I think it's compassion. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in a different place, you know. And some, some people still have jobs and still have money coming in. But that's not the majority of people. And I think sometimes we forget. We don't know what other people's experiences are. And we don't know what it's like to walk in their shoes. So we've got to really come from a very compassionate heart, recognizing that, 
we're, we're all doing the best we can with what we have in this moment. Yeah, that's so important, being kind and being compassionate, even with the people who don't agree with you. Because um, one of the things I'm finding that's dividing people a little bit is that um, you have the people who really are trying to um, stay positive through this because they don't want to buy into the fear. But then you have the other people who are saying that they're in denial and they don't know how um, how serious this is and it's irresponsible and but but really we need to actually realize that no matter what you feel and whether you're one of those people that are glued to the news and glued to the the information that the other people find fear-based I think all of us are just doing what we can to get through this and so what I ask you to do is don't be angry if someone needs to do it differently. Don't be angry. Just mm -hmm. have compassion. Let's be kinder. Let's come together through this. And just know that for some people, the fear makes them feel worse. And it doesn't mean they're being irresponsible, but they can responsibly still handle it while still staying uplifted. For other people, they feel more secure in having the fact, in, in believing they have the information. They feel they have more control if they continue to watch the news and get that information. And it mm -hmm. makes them actually feel better um, in some way, even though it, 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 it can sometimes come across as though they're stressing themselves out. But even if they are stressing themselves out and getting angry, we need to have compassion for them because all of that is driven by the fear that we're feeling, everybody is feeling underneath. That underlying fear is driving everybody's behavior right now. It's that fear of lack of control, the fear of not knowing how to handle the situation. And so basically our intention, Sonny's, Emmanuel's, mine, and many other people here, our intention is to help alleviate the fear. Just there's, <clears throat> that is actually, I think, the most important thing to do. Not alleviate the, the knowledge or doesn't mean being irresponsible, but I think that we can act more rationally if we can help to alleviate the fear. And so this is what maybe we can spend a few minutes talking about, Sunny and Emmanuel. Um, what suggestions would you have? And actually, Emmanuel, your process, which you spoke about earlier, was very, very strong and, and, and very powerful and very deep. So that in itself was huge. Um, but, but the thing is to realize that whatever you do to alleviate the fear is actually helping you at some level. It's making you react in a more rational way. It's actually even helping your immune system. It's okay. helping you to be more of service to other people. And it's helping you to be of light, as you have said, Sunny, about the importance of being of light. So um, to me, that is actually the number one thing, is to help people alleviate the fear, which is, why, um, which is what I'm committed to doing, which is why I yes. did the meditation yesterday and why um, I really wanted to do this with you guys today too. And I'm so happy that all three of us were able to do it. Yes, and yeah. I wanted to say, so uh, to alleviate fear, we just embrace it. So yes. just like if we want to simplify it to alleviate it, we embrace it. Um, I have also seen a lot of people angry at uh, people spreading positivity and that's okay. It just shows that often, usually people who are very afraid and angry, it's just something personal between them and themselves mm -hmm. and something that I've been really uh, being mindful of, and I think this is a great opportunity for all of us to step into more, is to understand that the way we show up for ourselves is the way that not only are we going to show up for the world, but the the way that the world shows up for us. So the way we show up for ourselves. So if you're feeling like you're lacking something, or if you're feeling like something is uh, missing, or you're afraid, give yourself your love. Give yourself, show up for yourself even more because then 
the world is going to rise up to meet you there. And if we all do that, this could be one of the most extraordinary shifts in of the ages. We could all really see a lot of the dismantling of the old patriarchal systems that are no longer serving us. We're going to see new uh, sacred uh, unity and consciousness and love and monetary uh, means. And there's going to be so many things coming up. Um, this is that time. I feel it. It's just about really showing up for ourselves, so that we can show up for the world and allow the world to show up for us. That's sort of something that I've uh, been exploring more and more, and I'm noticing a, a definite, definite peace that's coming up as a result of that. How about you, Anita? Oh, I'm uh, also the same sort of thing. Like for me to alleviate the fear, I agree with you. We first have to acknowledge it. We have to embrace it. And we can't see fear as the enemy because the minute you see it as the enemy and you fight against it, you're actually giving it more focus and more attention and, and, and you're inflaming it. It's like, it's like fighting fire with fire. Because, so in other words, if you fight the fear, it means you fear the fear. And so what you're doing is you're adding fear to the fear because you're fearing the fear. The thing is to embrace it and it will pass. You can talk to it ask it what is it here to tell you and i loved the exercise you did a little bit earlier about how eventually it dissipates because that's exactly how i believe that we must never fight the the fear and um, we really have to see what is it here to tell us i also believe that the people um, out there who feel angry the anger also stems from their fear and then once they kind of if they're able to actually address the fear and allow themselves it's I think anger comes as a result of denying that the fear is there. That's, that's what my intuition is telling me now. And, and until someone corrects me, that kind of feels right. That people who are suppressing their fear, it kind of explodes as an anger and they tend to take it out on other people. And, and they take it out on people who they think are pushing their fear buttons. Um, so mm -hmm. this is kind of what I sometimes see happening online. And the best thing we can do is to feel compassion for those people because they're operating from a place of fear. And don't, um, and don't fuel that by getting angry back because this is again something I see happening online a lot is that it gets fueled by people who get angry back and then it just escalates. But if you can see that there is underlying fear and either ignore it or say, um, say something like um, basically just something kind to them or don't don't say anything but send them love and um, the minute you send them love your own um, frequency is raising to that level that level of love and compassion and that level of the ability to see that everybody is just a soul who's trying to do their best in these times and the minute we're able to do that we're actually helping the people around us that's kind of so, how I would handle it. I, I think, so you know, one of the things that, um, that, that we can do, you know, acknowledging the fear. I think a lot of times when people think of us as like just trying to be positive or just focus on positivity, they think that we're ignoring or denying a part of us. But I think when we're using these tools, you can actually move through fear pretty quickly. And so, you know, the tool that Emmanuel said, and Anita, the, the tools you have. And one of the things I look at is fear is I think fear is like a beach ball. That we try to keep underwater and whenever you try to keep a beach ball underwater as soon as you're distracted it just pops up and it pops up and, and you have no control so that's the kind of the explosions the screaming the yelling the fighting what have you but if we just say oh there's my fear and 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 acknowledge it then we can focus on the thing that we do have the power to to um change and that is right here it's between our ears we can change our mind about the way we see things. We don't have to react. We can respond instead. And we can respond from a place of love instead of the reaction. And I think that, you know, there's two exercises I use. Number one, um, you can do a brain dump. Because I think a lot of us, the brains are just going too much. There's too much going on between here and not enough happening here when we get into that place. So just writing out all of the things you're thinking about and worrying about and and what happens is it takes that energy from this physical body and it moves it onto physical paper. Mm -hmm. And then I burn it. 
So you burn that, you burn that, um, that paper with all that energy on it, in it, invested in it, and then you bring in some light. Then you, then you do a visualization of, of white light. You do a meditation. For me, I call in the angels. I'm, a, I'm an angel communicator and have been since I was 13. So I call in the angels and ask them for support. And so I think that that kind of brain dump and the writing and burning can really transmute some of the energy. And then the other way that I'm that I'm dealing with all of this, and again, some people think it's it's uh, too much. Is I'm having fun. I'm I'm being in joy. I think joy is the highest expression of love there is, and joy spreads. Yes, this this pandemic, this um, virus has spread. Fear is as part of the virus has spread, but joy can spread too, and we can all be um, lights that expand the joy. So I'm doing every night on Facebook, on my page, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing a dance party. Last night we did a scavenger hunt. Like I'm just trying to do things, not trying, I am doing things that raise the vibration because we have a choice. We can be, be in fear and stay there or we can live our lives and have fun. We might be living our lives in small rooms or in a little house and can't express, but thank God we have something like this. We've got technology mm -hmm. to connect. And I think that when we get into joy and just think about this, if all of us, like I know I've seen Emmanuel playing his, his um, singing his song, which he's got you guys, if you have not seen his video of, of him singing, um, was it Mariah Carey? Uh, no, it was Bonnie Raitt. Bonnie Raitt. Oh my gosh, he's so good. Yeah, and you girls, guys have got to watch that. I was just going to say, people are commenting about your about your music, Emmanuel. And so, oh, thank you. <laughs> and I did a beautiful meditation yesterday to raise the energy, and and I'm doing things to to lighten the energy because that's the thing, you guys. We have a choice. We, we, yes, we need to be staying in our homes because we're honoring everybody, but we have a choice in how we're going to show up in this. And we're either going to be part of the solution or we're going to be part of the problem. We're going to expand the density or we're going to expand the light. And we get to choose that. It might not always feel like that. And when you have those moments, you take a step back, you embrace it, you recognize, oh, I'm having a human moment. Allow yourself to feel it and then choose joy and then choose joy and then choose joy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I love that. I love that. Because actually, um, I have um, a group of friends, and we're all like, um, sharing jokes with each other, you know, just because laughter is the best medicine. And yes. sometimes I'm hesitant to share these things publicly, because it may seem insensitive at, at a time like this. But actually, um, I think I will start sharing them uh, publicly now because I think laughter is the best thing that we can do for ourselves. And we have been sharing just um, via text with each other the, some of the memes that are going around, the toilet paper memes. You know, they're, they're pretty, there's some pretty hilarious jokes now. And we just do that to uplift each other. And there's no harm in it. No, and it's lightening the energy. I mean, if we, if we are as connected as we are right now, where we have to be staying in our homes to protect those that are the most vulnerable, then, and, and that can affect us, then how might joy transmute all of it? Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so anybody here listening in right now, if you have any funny videos yeah. or memes or jokes or anything uh, that are related to this time that we're going through, please share it on the thread. Please share it. We'd love to see it. We'd yeah. love to see them. Let's uplift each other. And check out Emmanuel's music because somebody actually posted here. I heard Emmanuel sing in an email yesterday. Wow, fantastic. This oh. is Liv Hilde Steiny. He, he, he did Liv. so good. It was, I, I messaged him and I said, dude, all right, seriously. She I'm used bad. some bad words. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Oh I'm going to check it out. I know Emmanuel sings beautifully, but I didn't see this yesterday. So I'm going to check it out. I'm curious. Oh, wow. Emmanuel is so gifted and talented. Um, Thank you. Yeah. As are both of you. I'm just, I, I think, you know, when we are in this kind of situation, I really had to assess some things because as I told you a few months ago, we do, we spend time together and I told, told you both to hold me accountable to do more of my music. And I really wow. slipped from that because I'm, you know, I don't know, it's like, I'm shy. I, I don't know what it is, but um, 
I, this experience of what's happening right now has really pushed me in the direction of, I love music. I love singing. I love writing. Um, I love just making people happy uh, I, the, every way I can, whether it's through healing work or supporting or music um, and, and or being funny. So uh, believe it or not, I can be pretty hilarious. So, uh, but um, yeah, so I want to show people more of that. And that's where that came out. And uh, uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully people are enjoying it. And, and being inspired in their own way to do their own uh, thing that maybe they're uncomfortable, they've been hiding, uh, that they can now step into. I hope that that's what it did. Actually, I got a few emails uh, of people who said that that's what it's doing for them. So that made me really happy. Maybe we can even throw out a challenge to everyone, you guys. Do, to go. Let's throw out a challenge of something like Anita said. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share these more publicly. And Emmanuel is getting out and he's speaking or he's singing in public. And that's something that, that is difficult. It's being vulnerable, right? So, and, and I, I, do, I do crazy shit all the time. So. <laughs> dance parties. <laughs> dance parties, pajama parties. I love it. I love dance parties and pajama parties. <laughs> everyone, everyone that's watching and say, hey, how about you guys do something that's out of the box for yourselves? Let's just expand mm -hmm. beyond what where our comfort zone is because none of this is comfortable, right? It's not comfortable. None of us plan to be in our houses with our kids and our husbands and our wives and our people like right there for, you know, 24 <laughs> seven for however many days. It's mm -hmm. not comfortable. So let's break out of that, out of that comfort zone. And people are asking, okay, where can we listen to Emmanuel? So go to his fan page. He's posted the video there and Nita had a meditation yesterday a beautiful meditation yesterday so you can go on her fan page to watch that and the um, group that i started is hearts helping humanity it's on facebook just put it in the search and you'll be able to find it there those are three things that you guys can connect with that we're all doing to just kind of raise the vibe and there are some funny funny memes oh my gosh mm -hmm. there's some that just made me pee my pants i'm not kidding <laughs> funny i love so it oh my goodness well do you know the toilet paper situation so be careful <laughs> with that yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, mean, I don't really keep my pants but i could if i didn't put them together longer yeah i um, i i have seen some incredible toilet paper memes <laughs> Yes, yes. So I know we're coming towards the end of our time together for today. Uh, but just everyone watching know that we are always with you. We're always connected. Um, message us all. Uh, let us know how you're feeling, how you're doing. We're always here for you. If either one of you or if you want me to just uh, close with a meditation, anybody want to do that? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. I think that would okay. be great. Awesome. And just uh, please make sure to check out Anita's meditation. It was amazing yesterday. Awesome. And Sunny has been putting out some amazing uh, videos as well. So please check that out as well. And um, all right, so I'm going to invite everyone to just close your eyes, take a deep breath in. This is going to be very simple, easy. Placing your right hand over your heart, just relaxing. Let's take another deep breath in, just breathing in that light, that light life force energy. And just exhale and feel yourself just fully relaxing into the chair, the bed, the couch, the floor that you're sitting on. Just let yourself be supported by that. And let's take another deep breath in. And gently release. And so the first thing that I invite you to do for yourself is to just feel gratitude. Feel gratitude for the fact that you are you, the fact that you are here, all of the experiences that you've been through, all of the challenges, everything that made you you. Let's just be grateful to all of that and to be grateful to yourself. So let's just feel that gratitude rising up in your heart, feeling that heart-hand connection, feeling that gratitude for yourself, for all the tribulations, the challenges, the fun, the bliss, all of it, everything that you've been through brought you to this point. 
of this magical person that you are today. So let's just be grateful for all of it. And now, because we are all expressing and feeling gratitude, this is uniting us in such a way where now let's send this gratitude to one another. Let's send it to Anita, to Sunny, to each and everyone tuning in. Let's just send this gratitude. Gratitude is another way of acknowledgement. I see you. I recognize you. I know who you are. Feeling the energy, the presence of all of the amazing soul family that's watching right now and watching the recording later. We're just connecting that gratitude and that love with one another. And as you're connecting and sharing your gratitude to this global community of light, in your awareness, I want you to start to see all of us holding hands in a big, big circle, like a huge circle that is spanning all across the world. I want you to visualize all of humanity holding hands with hearts open, swaying back and forth and just singing, singing songs of joy, of light. Maybe if you wanna use a song like Imagine by John Lennon just feel yourself in this visual. Someone is holding your hand to your right. Someone is holding your hand to the left. It doesn't matter who you see doing that. You may not even see them. Just know that they're there. We're all doing this together right now. And feeling this unity, this love, this gratitude for one another. Let's send this love, this gratitude to the world, to the planet, to the oceans, to the animals, to the vegetations, to the insects, to the minerals, to all living organisms, even seeming ones that have been causing people a lot of fear. Let's send, let's saturate all of it, all of the living things, the beings, the energies on this planet. Let's just saturate all of it with our love and with our gratitude together. Knowing that someone is to your left, someone is to your right, and knowing that there's a huge circle right now of lights, soul family coming together in this way. We're just blasting the world with so much light and love and compassion. Let's just feel into that. Allowing that joy to rise up. If you feel giggly, allow that giggle to come up. If you feel tears of joy, tears of relief, any fear that wants to be acknowledged, that's being saturated with love too. Let's just feel that for the collective. We are so powerful together. We are so, so powerful. We can create anything. This is what we're doing right now. And so we're gonna send this light to all of the media, to all of the governments, to all of the social media outlets. We're gonna send this to all of the structures, religions. We're just gonna send this love and compassion to all of it all of the old systems, we're just gonna send it so much love and we're gonna create space for the new systems that work for all humanity to birth forth. We're just gonna hold that space, knowing that it's gonna happen exactly when it's meant to be. Good, just feeling that gratitude for yourself again, for choosing to show up in this way for the world. This is not a small thing you're doing right now. Just sitting here, being with this collective that's happening right now, this connection, you have massively contributed to the awakening, to the expansion, to the healing of the world. And for that, and for so much more, let's express deep gratitude to yourself, to one another. Take a deep breath in, just gently opening your eyes, getting back into your body, back into the now. 
Feel your heart smiling, feeling what you just did was, wow, you did this, my friend. And so it is. Thank you both and everyone for doing that together. Wow, did you feel that? Feel that. Wow. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you. That was beautiful. And I felt everyone. I could feel everyone. I feel a shift just occurred. I know there was some meditations. Marianne was doing a meditation earlier uh, for the world. So I'm feeling something shifting for humanity today. I feel that. Me too. I'm feeling it too. Wow, that was powerful. And before we end off, I just wanted to just say two final things. I wanted to tell everyone um, that please feel free to keep your comments coming. We'll turn, we'll, we'll keep checking in and checking the comments. And if you guys have funny memes or links to really funny videos, keep them posted. And what I'm going to do, and maybe YouTube would do it too, I'm going to pick some of the best ones and actually post them on, on my page, on my social media platforms and share them so that everybody can have a laugh. Yeah, and, that, that's very fun. I love it. I yeah, love it. Yeah. yeah. So, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that it's Sunny's birthday, isn't it? Um, ah, yes. Tomorrow. So, tomorrow so, is your birthday, yes. Yes, and so if everyone who's tuning in right now, and Anita, if we can all just join in a collective happy birthday, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, everybody. Happy birthday, Sunny. We love you. Thank happy you birthday, Sunny. Thank you. We love you so much. Thank you very much. Well, you can be guaranteed I will be right here. <laughs> <laughs> My birthday was this week as well, and I was at home. <laughs> yeah. I feel for everyone who's having birthdays or weddings. Oh, my God, weddings. <laughs> I feel for everyone who's had to cancel stuff. So. Well, luckily, we've had a few of them, so it's not, you know, the end of the world here. We've had a few birthdays, so we'll be okay if we, you know, don't have mm -hmm. a big celebration this time. Exactly. The less, the better. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel as I get older. <laughs> Thank you guys awesome. so much. It was beautiful. Thank you all for joining us. We so appreciate it. Please, please um, open your hearts, allow yourselves to, and connect with us. If you need some support, we're all out there doing different things, offering different things. You, If you want to be of service, you can come and join my community. If you want to um, be able to uh, um, connect with Emmanuel's beautiful voice, go watch him. We've, we've got lots of opportunity and, and we're offering a lot of things just to help support you during this time. So yep. keep an eye out, you guys. We, we're all, we're here for you and we are all in this together. And I think that's so important to remember that even though we are teachers and, and speakers and healers in, in the work that we do, we are a part of um, the human race and we're just, we're all just part of humanity and we're here with you. Yep, yes. we're all part yes. of the human race together. And yes. um, I've done a whole lot of uplifting videos, which you can check out on my YouTube channel. So um, yes. there's over a hundred videos there if you need any, um, if you need perking up. So yeah. thank Perfect. you everyone. Thank you too so much from the bottom of my heart. And thank you everybody who's tuned in. Love you guys, stay well, stay right. safe, and go out and be lighthouses. Right, lighthouses. Lighthouses. Bye. Bye, everyone.